that all things work together for the good of those who will call according to your purpose, Lord. Heavenly Father, help us, Lord, to be the people that you want us to be, Lord. But we're living in trying times, Lord. But we want to thank you for all that you want for us. And Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless the minister that's going to preach the word, Father God. Get us, give us listening ears, Lord. Open hearts, open minds, Father God. That we can receive the word that you have to offer through him. And we praise you today, Lord. We thank you. We want to magnify your name. Lift you up that you can get the glory because it's not about us. And we pray this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen and thank the Lord.
I think Houston has been telling the Lord to do that all for the last two or three months, haven't you? The Lord, let it rain. But we need a lot of rain. We need a rain that washes away our sins. A rain that causes us to be whole again. We need a rain that brings us back into communion and relationship with God. That's the kind of rain we need. You know how refreshing it is uh, when the rain comes. It is just something about the fresh rain. How God renews us and revitalizes us from the rain. Some folk don't like rain. I like rain. Mother Woods, I, I said, without rain, no collard greens. Amen. So every now and then, the Lord knows just what we need. How I honor and bless the name of the Lord for just to be kind of back home again with faces, familiar faces I know. Amen. Amen. Y'all still letting the cold Davis come to church here? <laughs> there is hope. There is hope. Just faces of people that I love, I love so much. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for allowing me to stand and express my convictions about my God. Amen. Pastor Davis and I are longtime friends. Lovely wife, Carolyn. Man, that I knew before I knew Pastor David as we fellowship at the uh, Faith Southwest Church. Amen. Amen. We're just so grateful. So thank you for this opportunity to stand. Amen. Father, I thank you for this moment. Thank you. We take this moment serious because lives can be changed by yes. the hearing of your word. Amen. God, we need a word from you. Yes. We don't need another political affiliation. We don't need another candidate, another president, another mayor. We need to hear from you, God. Our city is in turmoil. Station after station, channel after channel. There's violence everywhere. But God, we know until a man's heart is changed, then we can change his habits. So God, we ask that you would just let a fresh anointing fall on this word. That you may be glorified in everything that we say and do. Let the words of my mouth and the very meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength, and who has become my redeemer. Amen. There is a word found in Mark, if you would. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4. Jesus had been teaching all day. and When he gets around to verse 35. He gives us another lesson. Starting at Mark chapter 4, verse 35, the New King James rendering says, On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat, and he was as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat on into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow, and they awoke him and said unto him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And uh, they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be, that even the wind and the sea obey him? I'd like to speak with you for just a few minutes. Wake him up. It's time to wake him up. Living here in the Gulf Coast, 
We've become accustomed to storms, tropical depressions, hurricanes. As a matter of fact, we're in the 2023 hurricane season from June to November 31. It is the hurricane season. Our most recent storms that mark where we come off the, the Florida coast and they usually originate off the coast of Africa and work their way into the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. You remember Alicia? Yeah, you remember Rita? Yeah. You remember Katrina? You remember Ike? Yeah. Delta, Zeta, Fiona? Yeah. All of these have had a set in our immediate area yeah. and the coast. Yeah. Usually hurricanes originate off of the coast of Africa and move their way in. And that gives us a little time to kind of plan for it. But the passage that arrested us today, that's got our attention, Mark's account of this gospel, Jesus was on a boat teaching disciples. He was talking about the sowing. He was teaching them the sowing of the saw and the seed of the, the mustard seed. He was been teaching all day long. He was using his boat as a pulpit to teach the multitude. After this lengthy event, Jesus stopped, sent the multitude away, and said, let's go to the other side. Mm, yeah. Now, the Sea of Galilee was about eight miles wide and about 12 miles long. Right. And about 700 feet below sea level with mountains on each side. Yes, sir. I'm trying to paint a picture for you that this warm tropical air from the lakes and the cold air from the mountains sometimes created what they call a lilac. What is a lilac, preacher? Well, a lilac is a sudden storm of dust or squall or even a hurricane type condition that comes all of a sudden. What starts out to be a routine day for these fishermen was turned upside down by a sudden unexpected day with Jesus. Have you ever experienced a day where things were going kind of routine? Now, my mama would say, Sister Henry, kind of dry long so. Have you ever had a day where things were just going well? And all of a sudden, the bottom falls out. Life consists of those kind of days. I don't care how long you've walked with them. Life consists of those kind of days. Yeah. They're rough days. They're trouble days. Yeah. Temp tempestuous days. Mm -hmm. There are days that are turbulent. There are some dark days. Starts out sunny. Yeah. Yeah. But before evening, yeah. darkness falls. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I suggest don't push the panic button. All right. All right. Just talk to Jesus. Yeah. Right. There are days when we come to our dead end. When we don't know what to do. Yeah. We have those kind of days. Yeah. Life has a way of changing courses on you without any notification. All right. <laughs> you can be on a roll at work. Mm -hmm. Just finish a good and successful evaluation. All right. And next week your, your position is eliminated. Yeah. <laughs> Life has a way of changing on us. Yeah. Yeah. You get a call from the school. And they find a weapon or illegal drugs on your child. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe the little apple of your eye mm -hmm. that you used to put borets on. <laughs> and the little lace socks and things. Uh, she comes home pregnant. Oh, Look how life can change on you. Yeah. Yeah. Or... That person that you walked down that aisle with that Saturday evening 20 years ago decides they no longer want to be married. Can I tell you, life can change on you. Life has a way of shifting and moving another way. March 20th, 2020, COVID came in and that was a lie lap. That was an economic storm that turned the world upside down. Even this sudden economic dust knocked the world off its feet. Storms will come. 
when you least expect it. But the passage tells us that we don't have to fret. We don't have to doubt. Verse 35 tells us that uh, Jesus said this. The first thing I pulled from this text, Jesus said, let's go to the other side. Now, that wasn't a suggestion. That was a directive. When Jesus says something, you can count on it. You can trust the words of the master's mouth. When Jesus said it, you can count on it. If he said, let's go to the other side, you, you got to know one thing. If he said, let's go to the other side, you, you know that you're going to not go over. You're going to go over and not go under. If he said, you're going over. Now, you don't know how you will get there, but if Jesus said it, you're going over. Didn't he step out one day and said, let there be light? And there was light. You remember in John chapter 9 when he spoke to that blind man. He took him and took the, the, the spittle. He put a, made a mud cake and put it on his eyes. And said it told him to go and wash. And he came back seeing. The Bible says that Lazarus had been stinking a long time. Can he deal with the stinking situation? But when Jesus came and spoke to him, and said, Lazarus, come forth. Uh, Theologians say he had to call Lazarus by a name because if he had to call him, all the dead would have gotten up. Can I tell you, I found joy and knowing to him that he can speak specifically to you. Yeah. Aren't you glad that Jesus doesn't get us mixed up? Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't put my blessing in Carolyn's mailbox. <laughs> Jesus can speak specifically to us. Yeah. Numbers 23 and 9 says this. God is not a man that he should lie. Yes, Neither the son of man that he should repent. Mm -hmm. Hath he said it, will he not do it? Yes. Or hath he spoken it, and will he not make it good? Right. God makes good on his word. Yes. Come on, let's go to the other side. Right. I'm not sure who I'm talking today, but God has spoken something to you. Mm -hmm. And you haven't seen it come to fruition yet. Yes. But if he said it, yes. it will come true. Yes. Whatever God said, yes. you can count on it. Yes. They began to get in the boat and travel to the other side. And as they got to the other side, a storm rose. Jesus was asleep. The Bible says Jesus was asleep on a pillow. That takes me to know that he wasn't taking a nap. Jesus was asleep on a pillow. Uh, can I ask a question? What happens when you're walking with Jesus and you still have a storm? Can I tell you, just because you're a believer, it doesn't make you exempt from the storms of life. Because you are Bibles reading, because you're tithing, because you're serving, that doesn't make you exempt. I go to worship regular. And yet storms rise. Trouble still comes. The, di the disciples had been with Jesus all day long. Mm -hmm. Now you would have thought that Jesus would have uh, mm -hmm. uh, kind of detoured the storm. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we have to go through. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes we need to go through. Yeah. Sometimes, my, I, I, my, my, my pastor America says, sometimes we get too used to God. Uh -huh. And think that we exempt from the storms, from the vicissitudes of life. Yeah. All right. You can have trouble even when you're walking through he never promised that walking with him would be a carefree situation. But he said this, Lo, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. Job said it like this, Man born of a woman is but a few days here, and those days are full of trouble. John 16 and 33 says, I have told you these things, that you may have peace in this world, for you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Then James turns around and tells us, count it all joy. Well, James, what do you mean? He says, count it all joy. You mean I'm supposed to count this hell I'm in as joy? But James says something very critical to us. He says, when you go through. Not if you go through. But when you fall into various temptations, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. I never thought I'd say this in my young age, but I thank God for everything I've been through. 
Do I have a witness or two here? I thank him for everything that he has built my spiritual family. It has taught me to trust him. I thank him for the trials that I've been. Because now I have more faith. I have more belief in him. Church, I'm just trying to dispel this 21st century theology that storms are avoidable if you do certain things. Uh, some of your TV folk tell you if you do the A, B's, and C's, then you won't have trouble. That's not Bible. They were with Jesus and still had trouble. They encountered the storm. Jesus wasn't somewhere distant. Jesus was on board, and they still had a storm. Right. Now, 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 sometimes your storm can be caused because of you. Yes. Come here, Jonah. Yeah. Jonah had trouble because Jonah sinned. I'm just trying to put that in there because I, I believe that sometimes we ask God, why am I going through? You know why. <laughs> Come on, you, you really do know why. Because you have done against God's will. So some of the storms, the Lord didn't sin. Don't blame everything on God. Because uh, my mother would always say, the Bible says, be sure your sins will find you out. Be sure that we stand in our storms at unexpected. Church, be sure that nothing slips up on Jesus. Well, somebody said, well, if he kind of knew there was a storm... Shouldn't have had given his boys a warning? I believe this. Jesus had just got through teaching. But sometimes he start testing you right after the teaching. He'll test you right after Bible study. He'll test you Sunday right after a good sermon. When you get home, there will be trouble just waiting on you. Sometimes the testing is right after your last victory. It's time to wake Jesus up. Oh, yeah. Wake him up in your life. Yes. These were experienced fishermen. Yes. They were familiar with the storm. They were familiar with the terrain. They were familiar with the, red, the, the rough seas. Mm. They had exhausted everything they knew to do mm -hmm. before they went and wake up Jesus. They called on Jesus mm -hmm. and there was no response. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, church, just because Jesus is silent, don't mean he's still. All right, now. You do know he works behind the scenes sometimes. Yeah. Right. I, I don't know if you've ever had an idea that if you go to see a particular play or, or a musical or your favorite artist, it's a whole lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes, behind the curtains. And many times I want to be encouraged today that Jesus is working behind the scenes. Uh -huh. You can't see him right now. There are times when you can't even see his hand. You can't feel his hand, but he's working. But just because he's silent doesn't mean he's still. The silence of God is hard sometimes for believers to believe that God, you're still with me. Sometimes, you, I don't care how long you've been walking, sometimes you can't hear his voice. But you know he's there. But every now and then, He'll send just a breeze of the Holy Ghost to come by and stop by your house and let you know that he's there. Amen. Jesus had been teaching all day uh, in his humanity. After teaching all day, the Bible says he went into the stern of the boat and fell asleep on the pillow. Jesus, even Jesus, got weary sometimes. You do know he was fully man and fully God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The term in, in theology says the hypostatic union. The hypostatic union is just a big word that says Christ is full of humanity yeah. and full of divinity. Mm -hmm. Simply put, he is God from the essence of the Father, yeah. begotten before time, but yet he's human in the essence of his mother, born in time. He's right. completely God. Yeah. There were times that Jesus went even into the mountains to rest. Can I say sometimes you need to rest? All right. All right. Yes. Our schedules are rigorous. Yes. Every now and then you need to take your time and rest. Yes. And I hear the song where it says, just have a little talk with Jesus. Yes. We'll make everything all right. Yes. Sometimes even Jesus pulled aside yes. and began to rest because he's fully God and he's fully man. 
But that same Jesus, John 1 and 14 says, and the word became flesh yes. and dwell among us. Mm -hmm. There comes a time in life when things are turbulent and we need to wake Jesus up. Yes. We call everybody else. We look at Dr. Phil. We look for Oprah. <laughs> um, we call our cousins in Louisiana and everybody else and tell them, I tell them you need to wake Jesus up. Because he's waiting to listen. Yeah. We need to wake him up in our marriages. Yeah. Wake him up in our home. Wake him up in our health. Yeah. Wake him up on our job. Yeah. Wake him up in our government. Yeah. Quit trying to take life on by yourself. All right. yeah. In Hebrews 4 and 15 it says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was at all times tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus knows about our storms. Yes. We've got a high priest that understands us. Yes. You know, he walked down here 33 years, right? Uh -huh. You know he understands our hearts and our aches. Yes. One writer says, Jesus knows all about our troubles. Yes. And he will guide and tell them, yes, Jesus knows. Yes. Another writer says, I must tell Jesus yes. all about my troubles. Yes. I cannot bear these burdens alone. Jesus began to speak to that storm. After they woke him up, he said, look, now since y'all woke me up, I got to do something. I got to show you my power. And after waking Jesus up, he rebuked the wind and said, peace be still. And the wind ceased. Take note that the storm subsided, usually gradually. But when Jesus spoke, the scripture says the storm ceased immediately. Yes. All right. Can I say that? There's some areas in your life yes. that Jesus can speak right now mm -hmm. and things can change. Yes. I know what they saw on the MRI. Mm. All right. mm -hmm. I know what they saw on the CAT scan. Yes. But Jesus can speak yes. and heal right now. Yes. He's that kind of God. Yes. He turns and he starts dealing with their faith. He says, oh, ye of no faith. Uh -huh. In Matthew 8, he, uh, uh, Matthew tells that same passage and he says, O ye of little faith. Uh -huh. Jesus says here, O ye of no faith. Well, How is it that you walk with me this long? Uh -huh. uh, you, you saw me. You saw me. You were with me when I stopped by Peter's house and, and dealt with his mother-in-law's fever. Uh -huh. You saw when I dealt with the woman who had been over 18 years. Yeah. You saw when I went to Jarius house and raised his daughter. You seen me work and you still have no faith. I want to ask the church today. How is it that we still don't trust God when we've seen his hand over and over again? Let's, can I talk about faith a little while? Faith is acting like God is telling the truth. Faith is acting like God is telling. Faith is the bridge that closes a gap to where you are, to where you need to go. Yes. Faith is in your feet, not in your feelings. God looking for you to put some action in place. Faith is acting like something is so, even when it's not so, that it may be so, just because God says so. Come on, say that with me. Faith is acting like something is so. Even when it's not so, so that it may be so, just because God says so. Sometimes you got to act on your faith, even when you can't see it. That's what faith really is. It's got to be in your feet. It's not about a feeling. God, I don't feel you. It ain't about what you feel. They fear it exceedingly. Jesus dealt with that fear. Because fear and faith. And I go in the same yeah, equation. Right, right. It's not that they were fearing so much the storm, but this supernatural power that Jesus had exhibited. The only thing more terrifying than having a storm outside of the boat than have that storm on the inside and not trusting God. Sometimes we can have storms inside. And I'm reminded, Margaret Duro wrote this song. We used to sing some years ago, in deep waters, afraid as I could be, praying that Jesus would come and rescue me. But just about the time when I thought I would drown, 
Jesus came and he calmed the ocean down. Have you ever been in a storm where you thought you were in deep waters? The life had gotten you so so you felt like you were on your way down. But Jesus came and he calmed the ocean down. He's able to do that, my friend. He's able to do that. You need to just wake him up. And when life gets too hard, wake him up. When that child is out of control, wake him up. When they're picking on you at the job, wake him up. I know what the MRI said, but wake him up. I close with a story. There's a lady, they said, was in northern Dallas. Coming out of a Walmart one day. And a couple of guys took her and went to rob her. And they took her down and duct taped her from head to toe. And they robbed her and they took her and threw her in a ditch. Duct tape from head to toe. And the woman was a believer. She said, God, I don't believe I'm going out like this. God, I need you right now. And as she began to talk to God, it started raining. And when the rain started coming, the rain was coming and she began to wiggle her way through. And the water started loosening up the duct tape. Can I tell you that sometimes he'll send a storm to set you free. Every time then, he'll send the water. When the water starts rising, he starts setting you free. I'm just trying to tell somebody that wake him up. When life seems hard on you, wake Jesus up. He's able. How many you know he's able? How many of you know that you've been through the storm and the rain? But he's still able. Won't he do it? Won't he loosen up the country? Won't he bring the revenues in? Won't he make your enemies become your footstool? I know he will. Yes, he will. I know he will. Sometimes it was still a storm yeah. to set you free. Oh, yeah. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that God sometimes sent us, we just need to wake him up. Right. I don't think that the believers sometimes understand the power that we have in just our tongue. That's right. Just calling on Jesus oh. will make everything all right. Oh, yeah. Old song we used to sing, Master, the tempest is raging yes, and the billows are tossing high. The sky is all shadowed. No shelter. Have you ever been there? On earth is not. Perish thou not that we perish. How can you lie and sleep? Ooh, when it seems like each moment so madly is threatening. Oh, great in the end. The wind and the way shall obey. Peace be still. Oh, peace be still. Oh, peace be still. Oh.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you for what we are about to receive. We thank you for the offering. We thank you for the giver. Now, God, there are some may be giving out of their wealth and resources, and there may be some may be giving out of their poverty. But, God, you look at it all as a gift. You look at the heart in which we give. Help us, God, to be a biblical tithers to you and to this church and support this ministry. We thank you, God, that you even allowed us to have gainful employment, that we can give back to you as you require. Thank you for every offering, every dime that's going to be lifted on this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. We'll stand and follow 
the offering and ushers. Amen. This side, would you stand, please?
I don't know how I would make it if I couldn't talk to God. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it all right. Let us pray for those on the prayer list. God, we thank you right now for the names that have been listed. And God, you told us to come, but God, you already know in advance because you're God. We ask that you would step in those situations where there's bereavement, step in, God. Where there's sickness, step in. Confused homes, step in. Wayward children, step in. Fractured marriages, God, step in. Step in in those situations where the doctor has said we've done all we can. But God, we know that they haven't called on you yet. Every situation, there's no situation that you can't handle. And we stand here and say, Jesus, come in right now. Every situation, God, you can handle it according to your will. We pray your will now, God, that your will be done in every situation. Lord, we pray blessings on Dr. Matthew Davis as he leads this congregation forward. As he has stood time and time again, uh, when the pews were full, when the pews were empty, touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Every musician, every member that's under the sound of my voice, touch him right now. And the God, when you leave this place and go to these dangerous streets, dispatch some guardian angels to be right along with us. Oh God, we thank you right now. We stand in agreement with you that whatever you do is right and good. We love you, but thank you, even in advance, for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. I think we're ready to go home. And uh, Amen. Is that right, Sister Henry? The oxtails ought to be ready by now? You put them in the slow cooker? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. I won't knock on that door. <laughs> amen. Thank you again. Thank you again, Pastor Davis, for allowing us to come. Amen. If nothing else, you should stand. And your customer. God is